It's a great privilege tonight uh, to introduce my brother in Christ and brother in the ministry, Marty Watkins. We met where all good preachers should meet, on a golf course. Uh, this last year, um, I was introduced to a group called Veterans and Friends, and uh, uh, the gentleman that introduced me to the group's a veteran, and I'm a friend. <laughs> but uh, Marty is a veteran, and I want to thank you for your service to our country. Uh, he's also a graduate of Martin University, and uh, he serves as an associate at the Church of the Living God, number three, correct, indicator. And I have asked him to come and share whatever the Lord has laid on his heart. Uh, we try to get out before midnight, so anytime before then, you're fine. <laughs> no, we look forward to having you come and share with us. Thank you. First of all, I would like to say it is an honor and a privilege to be here on this evening. Uh, Pastor Scott, you know, the Bible says in order to have friends, you must first show yourself to be friendly. And I thank you for the friendship which you have showed me. And I know that we as ministers, pastors, uh, men of God, sometime our best witnessing is done outside these walls. You and I both know that some of the people that we golf with, they're not all saved. There are some who probably never call on the name of Jesus. So therefore the Lord has put us on the battlefield to be a witness for him. Amen. Uh, I have a little story to tell you, a little joke if I could. There was a young man, and he caught the end of his parents' conversation. And at the end of that conversation, he heard them say, well, we might as well have the old goat over for dinner. So that Sunday, when he got to church, the young boy was so excited to know that the pastor was coming over for dinner. So he went to the pastor's study, and he says, Pastor, I know what we're having for dinner. The pastor said, you do? He says, yes. He says, we're having goat. The pastor said, we're having goat. He said, well, how do you know we having goat? He said, well, I heard my parents say we might as well have the old goat over for dinner. <laughs> Got to be careful what we say around our children. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I won't be with you long due to the hour. And I asked the pastor, was there any particular topic to speak on? He said, wherever the Lord leads you. We know that this is the weekend of the Martin Luther King celebration. We must understand that, yes, Martin Luther King was a great man. But Martin Luther King could not do anything without the Lord's help. God had put something on the inside of him, and that is what manifested on the outside. In other words, Dr. King was very productive in what he did. So with that thought this year, I would like for us, if you have your Bible, to turn to the 13th chapter of Luke. Thirteen chapter of Luke. And boy, I'm glad, Pastor, I was sitting back there when all those questions was coming at you. I was like, whew, I started sweating. <laughs> Luke, the 13th chapter, 
beginning at the sixth verse. And it it reads, He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Verse 7, Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Verse 8, And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. Verse 9, And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt shalt cut it down. I would like to speak with you briefly this evening about this year also. This year also. This year being a productive year, 2017 has passed. We're now in the year of 2018. And as I look at this text, I see the word also. That word also suggests that there have been other years. And as we read this text, we see that this is a parable from Jesus Christ. It was a parable from Jesus to his disciples. We know that Jesus himself was a great parabolic teacher. What are parables? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. So I get to ask the questions now. (laughs) A parable is an extended metaphor. It is an extended simile. In other words, they are an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And as I read, this story opens up with a certain man that had a fig tree planted in the midst of his vineyard and he went to that tree expecting figs and the word is he found nothing the bible says that his report to the lord to the father to the owner he says i've been going out there. I've been going out there checking on this tree. This is not the first year I've been out there checking on this tree. Matter of fact, it's not the first year that this tree has let me down. He says, matter of fact, I've I've went out there for three years. I've given it three chances. I know three years is ample time for this tree to have to give me something. So as we read the text, he says, well, this is my suggestion. He says... I want you to get an axe. To get an axe and cut it down. Why cumber it the ground? His thought was that we can replace this tree that's not giving us anything. We can replace it with something or someone that can, re- that can produce some fruit. 
This tree was just taking up space. He said, cut it down. I'm tired of fooling with it. I've given it enough chances. But as we read on in this story, then we see the tender hardness of the owner. He says, I'll give it one more year. Now, this is not really about the tree. It's easy for us to talk about the tree. So I'm going to keep it easy for you. You see, the patience of the dresser has been taxed for three years. So my first point is that this year also suggests retrospect. Looking back, he looked back over the years he had visited the tree. He's thinking in his mind all that he has done for this tree. He's thinking about all the time he has given to this tree. He was thinking the more that he put into it, the less he would get out of it. The tree, like many people, have wasted valuable time with unproductiveness. We have young people in our communities who have the strength to build up, but they're using that strength to tear down. I want you, while you're sitting there in your seats, to reflect on what God has done for you already. So in retrospect, this tree doesn't even realize the conversation that's going on at this time. The tree is standing out there doing what it normally does, and that is nothing. Not only does this point to retrospect, but it also points to prospect. Not prosperity. Even though there is prosperity in prospect, prospect means what I can look forward to. This means I've got some prospect. I'm still living. I can do something better this year than what I did last year. Then we have the process. He says in this story, I want you to dig it and dung it. Now, I don't know how many of you are farmers here, but that word dung, you know what it is. It's manure. <laughs> it's stinky stuff. <laughs> and so uh, he says here that I need you to dig or I want to dig around this tree. So maybe it's possible he was thinking that the tree was not getting enough water. Wasn't getting its equal share. So the landowner goes out and he personalizes it. You see, we must understand that the process of the Lord is that he's going to do something personal in each and every one of our lives. Now just remember, this tree wouldn't give God 
anything. This tree wouldn't give his owner nothing. He says, but instead of cutting it down, I'm going to give it more. And that's how the Lord sees us. He says, listen, I have given you time after time to be productive with the life that I have given you. And there's times when the devil wants to come in and he wants to go to God and he wants to destroy our lives. He, he wants to do something to us. But thank God for Jesus. That Jesus is our mediator. He stands between us and God. And when the devil wants to tear us down, the Lord himself says, Father, give them another year. And so for those who haven't been doing anything, I have a question. What has been stopping you? Some of us or some people use excuses the first year. They're used it the second year. And they're using it the third year. Will you use that same excuse this year? Also, the tree doesn't realize that it's being set up to do better. Don't you know that when we have a test or a trial that is put in our life, we're just being set up to do better? Amen? And sometimes we don't see it. Until later on, there, there is an old saying that says, we'll understand it better by and by. You, you, you all had some real good questions for the pastor. But one thing we must understand is that we have a finite mind. Our thinking ability is limited. God has infinite wisdom. That means that he sees things way down the road that we can't even see. Sometimes there, there are times when, you know, you're, you're ready to take off and go somewhere. And you say, well, I'm, I got to be there in 15 minutes. I'm going to leave here at such, such time. And for some reason... You did not leave on time, but as you travel down that road, you see that there was a terrible accident. God saw that, and what he did was prevented you from being in that accident. That is God's infinite wisdom. We don't understand everything God does. And then again, I'm going to jump ship here for a moment, but let, let me say something. God is such a gracious God. He is such a merciful God. He knows all. He sees all. He's everywhere at the same time. God could very easily say, you know what? On Monday, you're going to get into a car wreck. On Tuesday, you're going to have a heart attack. On Wednesday, you're going to lose your child. On Thursday, you're going to get your leg cut off. On Friday, see, God could show us all these things if he wanted to. But he knows that we cannot handle those kind of things. That's why he says, I will not put more on you than you can bear. So here we see that they had to use some dung. Dung is stinky stuff. And sometimes 
God has to allow stinking situations in our life to get us to move in the direction that he intends for us to move in. Amen, somebody? <laughs> we must realize that God did not put us here just for ourselves. Now, I'm talking about a tree, a fig tree, that was supposed to produce some fruit. Now, if you know any, notice anything about a fruit tree is that you will never see an apple tree eating apples. You will never see an orange tree eating oranges. Matter of fact, the fruit trees produces fruit for others to enjoy. And you know what? When you go by and pick that apple, pick that peach, or pick that orange off that tree, that tree doesn't get mad. It just produces more fruit. What am I saying here? That when we look at Gal Galatians, the fifth chapter, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. There are supposed to be certain qualities in us. Love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. <laughs> These are the fruits that we're supposed to be producing as children of God. And for those of us who have parents, Sometimes when you have children, I mean, sometimes don't you be like, you know what, I'm about getting sick and tired of your disobedience. I told you to go sit down and I told you no, and, but yet you want to be what we call hard-headed. So sometimes you have to get that bottom side. And that's what Jesus is saying in this story. Listen. God has given us time. What are we doing with the time that he's giving us? N not what are we doing while we're inside these four walls. See, we can do, I mean, we can do come inside these four walls and we can praise the Lord and we can hug everybody and we can shake everyone's hand and we can tell everyone that we love you. But what do you do outside these walls? You say, oh, yes, I go to so-and-so church. But what does the community see? Do they see the love? Do they see the joy? Are you bearing fruit? Not only fruit, but are you bearing good fruit? Because when God created man, he said that it is good. So everything that you and I do, it should be good and pleasing, and not only in the eyesight of man but in the eyesight of God we should not be people pleasers we should be God pleasers because you know what if God, God says listen if, if I'm for you who can be against you so I'm going to ask a question today talking about this year Will you make this a better year? Will you treat others 
the way you want to be treated? Will you love others the way you want it to be loved? Will you forgive more this year? Will you be more friendlier this year? You know, it's easy for us to love those who loves us. But the Bible says, pray for those who despitefully misuse you. We thank God for allowing us to see the beginning of 2018. There's no guarantee we're going to see it end. But you know what? We ought to thank God for just allowing us to see the beginning of 2018. Because there were some people who made preparations for the year 2018 and the Lord did not see fit for them to make it over. So if you are here this evening, you ought to just, just give the Lord a hand of praise for allowing you to make it over in 2018. <laughs> Listen to what Matthew, the third chapter and the 10th verse says. That... Those who do not produce good fruit will be cut down. Now, I said, you say, well, we didn't know he was going to speak like that. Boy, that's kind of deep there. But sometimes we want the Bible, we want to use this word of God as a spiritual medicine cabinet. I'm going to close down here for us. But see... The Bible is not supposed to conform around our lives. Our lives is supposed to conform around this Bible. It's not a medicine, spiritual, uh, make me feel good cabinet. No. Yes, there are scriptures in here say that we are more than conquerors. He'll make your enemy your footstool. Uh, we can do all things through Christ. Oh, Jesus. I mean, that makes us feel good. But what about scripture that says, for the wages of sin is death? You know, there's some people, and I could say this reverently, there's people who will walk around and they'll tell other people, go to hell. Now, that's not a curse word. It's in the Bible. Hades, hell. <laughs> but there's people who would actually say that. But just because someone tells you to go to hell does not mean you have to go there. But when we stand before the Lord and say, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? And he said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, you're already in heaven when he says this. And if he says, depart from me, that means you're going to hell. I know that one day, I want him to hear him say, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. You have been productive. You have stood up for me. What about you? This year, I submit to you today that this is your year. This is your year to be productive. With everything going on in today's society, we need more Christians.
to be productive. We need to show the world that there is a true and living God. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious and eternal Father, You know all, you see all, and you're everywhere. And so, Father, we come to you asking that you allow us to bear the fruit that you have put inside us, not only in the church, but allow us to show the fruit in our homes, on our jobs, and in our community. We ask, Father God, in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, that you allow us to be a witness to those who are saved so that someone might say that there is a true and living God. We ask, Father God, that you protect each and every one of us as we leave this building, but not your presence. For we will be sure that when this Christian race is over, that we will be sure to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, let every voice say, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here uh, tonight, and we appreciate you coming out. Uh, Brother Marty, we're so thankful for the word that uh, the Lord gave to you to give to us. And so we can go from this place and put it into practice. May this year be our best year ever. Amen? Amen. Lord bless you. Have a great week.